Hello everyone and thank you for joining us here today. I am Mickey Feldman Simon. I am the founder of I'm Back at Work. I am also a career and executive coach and my mission is to help people become a better version of themselves, both personally and professionally. I have over 25 years of corporate experience. I've held um, different executive roles in marketing operations, and mostly in recruiting and human resources. I have a master's in organizational behavior and a BA in educational counseling and psychology. I'm also a mother of two. I recently became an empty nester and I'm enjoying my newfound freedom with my husband and our two poodles. I've also taken multiple career breaks throughout my life. I have taken breaks to move continent, to, as you can hear from my accent, to take care of my kids and to take care of my aging parents. And I've successfully returned to the workforce after each one of those breaks, reinvented myself. And I started I'm Back at Work with the mission of helping other women successfully return to, um, to the workforce. We offer a lot of free resources on the I'm Back at Work platform. And I'm very proud to say that we have helped thousands of women regain confidence and independence using this platform. And I'm thankful for people like Chris Vasiliadis who join us and collaborate with me to offer all these resources to people. So today we have Chris Vasiliadis with us here today to talk about Ignite Your Energy and Avoid Burnout for Top Performance. I'm very excited to have Chris here and I'm now going to turn my, oh, before I turn my video camera off, I'm actually going to make sure that everybody can use their um, GoToWebinar panel. So the, your webinar panel may look like the image on the right where it is all closed up or the image on the left where it is expanded. And to open and close it, it's actually very simple. All you need to do is click on the orange arrow and that opens or closes the panel. Now, if the panel is also obstructing the view of the webinar of the PowerPoint, what you do is you just click anywhere at the top of the panel and then you can drag it out of the way so that you can see the presentation. In the last five minutes of the webinar, we will have a Q&A session and we, um, to ask questions, we ask that you click on the grey questions bar and then you type in your questions in the blue rectangle underneath. We will address all of your questions at the end of the presentation. So now I'm passing it on to you, Chris. Thank you. And I'm going to turn my video camera off so you can concentrate on the presentation. Great, and thank you so much for having me here today, Mickey. I'm thrilled to speak with you and speak to your audience here. Uh, before we launch into the meat of the presentation, let me tell your folks a little bit about myself. Uh, again, my name is Chris Vasiliadis. I'm a health coach, speaker, and author. My business is called Priority Wellness, which I have owned since 2008. I am a national board certified health and wellness coach, which essentially means that I meet the knowledge, skills, and abilities I've demonstrated that I meet uh, that premium set of standards for delivering health and wellness coaching. How I ended up here, uh, I guess how I started my path that ended, uh, resulted in my becoming a health and wellness coach is three years before I started my practice, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis which is a uh, chronic disease of the central nervous system. Uh, I was diagnosed with that in 2005, and that caused a whole bunch of lifestyle changes for me personally, which led to initially health and wellness becoming more and more important to me personally, so much so that I decided to change careers and help other folks create their ideal version of their health and wellness. In my work, besides doing one-on-one -on -one health coaching over the phone, and uh, conducting coaching in different settings from academic to corporate. I speak on a variety of health and wellness topics, including preventing burnout, our topic of today, energy management, mindfulness, and stress management. I'm also the author of a book called Ignition, A Professional Women's Guide to Energized Burnout Proof Living. I released that book in April of this year, April of 2019. And in fact, uh, the material that I share with you today, you can consider that an excerpt of my book. 
And at this point, I'm going to shut off my webcam so you can launch right into the meat of the presentation. My mission through my work is to empower as many people as possible to be steady in their energy and focus, resilient in their health and performance, and sane in how they run the swirl of their professional and personal lives. What you can expect in today's webinar are a few things. Number one, to become aware of five essential energizing elements for performing well while preventing burnout. And I'm going to share those elements with you in the context of a tool I created, which I call the Burnout Proofing Dashboard. You will also begin creating a wellness vision, which defines how you best need to be fueled at this time. You'll have the opportunity to rate yourself on each essential element. And then at the end, we'll wrap up by identifying your next one to three action steps to start fostering your performance and your resilience. You'll, you might hear me say this a few different times today, uh, but my overall philosophy is using your health and wellness as a tool to achieve whatever it is that's important to you. What I'd like to do, first of all, if you haven't grabbed a uh, piece of paper or pen and a notebook, um, I would invite you to do that so you can take notes as we go, because I'm going to invite you to do a, a couple of different ratings and, and writings as we move through this material. But first of all, I'd just like you to bring to mind a, a goal, a professional or personal goal that you already know you're working on for at least the next 90 days, something that you want to achieve um, during that period of time or by the time 90 days rolls around. So just bring that single goal to mind. You might have a number that you're working on, but just pick one. And now start thinking about how you need to be fueled to make that goal happen. I'm gonna walk you through some, some things to ask yourself, but just initially bring that goal to mind and start thinking about how you need to be fueled to make that happen. So as we begin, I'm going to present that burnout proving dashboard I referred to. And a lot of times people ask, well, what do you mean by burnout? And I particularly like a definition by a, a Dr. Philippe Weston, which is, um, their definition is a syndrome of depleted emotional, physical, and cognitive energies, cynical attitudes, and feelings of personal ineffectiveness and incompetence. So if you're feeling run dry, overstretched, overtaxed, um, you might be feeling these things. So that's something to keep in mind in terms of what burnout could look like. So here's the burnout proofing dashboard. And this is just to give you an overview of the five essential elements that I'm going to go through in the next few slides. So you'll see in the center, I have a wellness vision. So the burnout proofing dashboard is driven by a wellness vision and I'll define what each of these are as we go forward. Around the wellness vision is the first essential uh, element, inner balance. And then inner balance is surrounded by self-compassion, energy sources, presence-driven focus, and social slash support. And all these work together to help fuel you in ways that serve and matter to you. They're ways of doing and ways of being. Um, you might use these independently, and you'll also see as I explain each of them, they may depend on each other or overlap a little bit. But together, this is what helps to give you resilience and help you prevent you from burnout. And I often tell people, this isn't about trying to be perpetually happy or like the Energizer Bunny all the time. It's about being steadily fueled in order to serve in ways that matter most to you. And, and really to be fueled in the context of that goal you just thought of and how you need to be fueled to make that happen. So the first thing we're going to focus on is the center of that burnout proof proofing dashboard, the wellness vision. And you'll see I have a compass here and that's how you can think about, about it. It's what's directing how you're fueled. So what is this wellness vision? 
It's a compelling declaration of your, the state of health and wellness that you want at some point in the future. It's not an essay, it's, it's pretty brief. It's about a three to five sentence paragraph. And it includes what you're doing, how you're feeling, maybe even how others are describing you as illustrative as possible. And again, it's in the context of how you need to be fueled to attain your 90 day goal. So again, keep that, that 90 plus day goal in mind. And let's look at an example of a wellness vision to help you start thinking about what the pieces of yours might look like. And this is where you might pull out your, your pen and, and notebook or piece of paper and just maybe start jotting down a sentence or two. But let's go through this example and I'll read it out loud um, just to have that sink in in a different way. So you'll see I picked a, an example with a date. Uh, we're recording this November 14th of 2019. So I chose a date three months from today. So I started with by February 14th, 2020, I'm responding in a more conscious way to my work chaos. I'm gladly attending an enjoyable social gathering once a week. My body feels strong and vibrant from completing a 5K by at least walking or walk, walk jogging it. I have a routine relaxation practice in place. I feel more grounded, less flustered, less in a rush, and people often comment on my calm, positive demeanor. So let me just outline the pieces of the definition that that fits. It's, it's stated in I terms, in terms of what, what you want for yourself. It's five sentences. It's describing how this person's feeling, what they're able to do, and perhaps how others are describing them. And the, the major thing is it needs to be described in a way that feels compelling for you. What's gonna pull you forward? What's gonna, what really resonates for you? So I'll just give you a moment to jot down Maybe you might not write the whole thing in this moment. You might write down a few sentences. Um, maybe even it's just one sentence or some phrases at this point of what you know you want in your wellness vision that's gonna help fuel you to, to reach that goal that you're looking to achieve. So I'll just give you a couple seconds to jot down some thoughts. Okay, so with that in mind, so you have at least an idea, the initial beginnings of the wellness vision. So keep that in mind as we move through my definition of these five essential elements for helping you create burnout proof ways of living. The first element is inner balance. So on that burnout proofing dashboard, I had inner balance surrounding the wellness vision. And so first of all, what is inner balance? It's a sense of feeling grounded, centered and having some breathing room. And I recommend that people focus on inner balance before work-life balance. In fact, I'm actually trying to toss out the word work-life balance for a number of reasons. First of all, I feel like it's not just that there's work and there's life. It's not like it's split 50-50 all the time. There's work, work is one facet of life. And then there's a whole bunch of other facets of life. There's family, there's friends, there's fun, there's fitness, there's learning and development, there's ways of contribution, there's things that you might explore and do, uh, things that you do outside, whatever. But there's many facets of life that I feel like the term work-life balance misses, number one. Number two, in our world today, the lines between work and life are very blurred uh, due to our ability to be connected 24 seven with our phones and computers and devices, and our ability to work remotely and work from home. Everything gets blurred. So that makes kind of the balancing of work and life a little tricky, um, or just that term doesn't even work. And then what I find often when someone says they're wanting more work-life balance, that typically is coming from a place of feeling kind of frenetic and if you're trying to create balance from a place of frenzy, you're likely to get more frenetic, create more frenzy. Versus if you come from a place of feeling balanced, 
then you're going to create more balance. And, and for all those reasons collectively is why I advocate focusing on inner balance before even thinking about work-life balance. Another way you can look at inner balance is creating various types of space. So for instance, if I were to ask you to open up your calendar now, whether your calendar is on your phone or on paper, how much white space do you have? Or are things jammed back to back to back in your calendar? So that creating some opportunities for breathing room and space, even if it's five or 15 minutes between appointments can be a, a way to begin there. Also think about when you're in the shower, how often ideas pop into your head in the shower and almost you can even problem solve in the shower. That's because we've allowed our minds to wander. So think about how you might be able to create that kind of shower space to help you problem solve, be creative. So I invite you, and it, you'll see at the end of each of these elements, uh, I have a question that I pose to you to think about. So for inner balance, it's in, in, what, in what ways can you begin to create space for yourself? So you might jot down some of those thoughts, along with considering how would you currently rate your quality level of inner balance in your life on a scale of one to 10, where one is poor and 10 is off the chart fabulous. How would you currently rate the, the current level of your inner balance? Next element is self-compassion. So what self-compassion is, is being kind and patient and loving to yourself and essentially honoring your needs, what you need uh, at this point in time, even in this moment or this day. The aspect of self-compassion I'll focus on for this webinar today is focusing on the words that we use, both those we say out to ourselves and those we say out loud. And I, I find especially with women, we uh, are not always as kind as we could be to ourselves. We use a lot of punitive language, um, things that are um, condescend uh, shameful to ourselves or things like, oh, I'm stupid, I'm lazy, I'm an idiot, what have you, versus uplifting ourselves. And um, those words have power, whether we're, we're using words that cut us down or lift ourselves up. And the words that cut ourselves down do not help enable us. In fact, they, they limit us and they shut down possibilities. Where if we use words that lift ourselves up, it's more empowering and expansive and we see more opportunities and options. Just think about if you have a, a small child that you're close with or even one of your closest friends and if they're struggling, the sort of words that you use for them to encourage them, those are typically uplifting. We usually don't shame them with punitive words. So think about treating yourself like you would in encouraging a small child or encouraging a best friend if they were encountering a situation that, that you feel you're struggling with. What, you, what words will you use to uplift yourself? And you can use, if you're, if you're in this habit of thinking or saying not so great words about yourself, use that as a trigger to say, nope, I'm not gonna go there. I'm gonna use words that boost me and are more encouraging even if you need to say that out loud as you're doing it. So again, rate yourself on your current level of self-compassion on a scale of one to 10. Energy sources is the next element. And I could talk for a really long time about energy sources. In fact, uh, this, this element I devoted two chapters to in my book where all the other elements had one chapter. Uh, but let me cover some basics uh, with the time I have here today. First of all, I wanna uh, bring some awareness on energy management versus time management. And I was first introduced to this about in, in about 2003 when I read the book, uh, The Power of Full Engagement by Tony Schwartz and Jim Lohr. And what they made me aware of and what I enjoy sharing with others is this notion of the power of you're managing your energy versus managing time. If you think about it, time it has a built-in ceiling. We each have 24 hours in the day, seven days a week, and no matter our intelligence level, socioeconomic status, what have you, that's all we get. And sure, there are things that we can do to become more efficient with our time, 
but there's a built-in ceiling. When you consider energy, and if you're aware of the things that give you energy and drain you en your energy, and the different types of energy available to you, and you consciously do things to manage that, it's like time magically expands. It really is a up leveler in increasing your productivity and performance. So that's why I advocate managing energy before you look at managing time. And you can start looking at energy in four different buckets, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. And I'll just give a brief definition of each. Physical, you can think of as health. And so it's how are you routinely renewing and recharging your physical health. Emotional, you can think of as happiness. Uh, and that you can think of that as an optimistic mindset. What helps you cultivate such a mindset of opportunity, enjoyment, and adventure. Mental is focus, and it's the ability to focus in an engrossed way on the most important tasks or situations and define when and where you carve out space for making progress on your essential projects. Spiritual energy, you can think of as purpose, and that's doing more of what you do best and enjoy most in feeling both connected and congruent with your big whys. Uh, you can also think of it as being stirred by something larger than yourself, as in a higher purpose, power, or cause. So again, when you're, number one, aware of these quote-unquote buckets and manage them in a conscious way, it really helps to stoke your resilience. So think about, number one, overall, in terms of how you are in managing your energy. Rate that on a scale of one to 10. And think about what, which of those buckets would best lever, will you best leverage to stoke your resilience? What's, gonna, what's most relevant to your wellness vision and that 90-day goal? The fourth element is what I call presence-driven focus. And you can think of that as living deliberately with this triad of intention, attention, and impulse control. Basically ways that help you be here now, as the image describes. So intention, you can think of that as consciously choosing a desired outcome or direction. Attention, which is synonymous with mindfulness, is noticing and observing what's going on both outside and inside you and doing that in a certain way, which is on purpose in the present moment and releasing any immediate judgment. Impulse control is a, avoiding a knee-jerk reaction to the situation you are. And that could be a situation, a certain type of individual or personality or what have you. Um, and basically being able to respond more deliberately and versus react in a, in a certain way. So when you're able to collectively do all these things, that's presence-driven focus. And ways you can help build those muscles are, there's different practices you can do from meditation to mindful walking to journaling, but also you can just infuse or layer these, these ways of being on top of any everyday activity. Like for example, for those of you who are in the current job search market, perhaps for your next interview, going in there with a particular intention, how you want that discussion to go. Um, have bringing mindful attention to that, noticing and observing what's going on, really actively listening in that conversation versus getting ready to prepare your next response, hearing what's going on, watching body language and such, noticing what's kind of coming up for you and quelling that if you need to. And then impulse control, avoiding a um, knee-jerk reaction, which might include in a conversation interrupting or cutting someone off, or if someone says something that kind of presses your buttons, and a way you can kind of quell the knee-jerk reaction is to just literally take an in-breath and out-breath before you respond. It's okay, how can I consciously respond instead of knee-jerk react? So that was just one example I gave, but you might think of other ways that if you are present in, this, in these three ways, bringing this triad to the forefront, what would most benefit you? What 
would most support you again in your wellness vision and achieving that 90 plus day goal. So jot down your thoughts on that and rate yourself on your current level of presence driven focus on a scale of one to 10. And then element five, which is the final element is social slash support. What this is, is having a reliable support system and in-person social connections in place. Um, we women, we try to be super women a lot, and there are so many people and services available to us to help us along the way. So there's no need to go out whatever it is we're doing alone. So in the context of what we're talking about today, who think about, start thinking about who your team is. Who might you share your wellness vision with? Who would be excited to support you maybe even join you along for the ride and create their own wellness vision so you might jot down a name of a person or two who would help you with that and then on the flip side who might consciously or unconsciously sabotage your efforts who might you know when you want to focus on updating your linkedin profile and spending time doing that uh, someone might want you to go out and uh, play whatever play looks like and you know you need to focus on that first so who might you need to say like I, I need to focus on this whatever activity at this time but i'll be happy to join you afterwards for example and make sure that you're you're clear on what your needs are and how what you need from support for them and that's the last question so think about who is on who would you consider your a team of support are they aware of it and and how do you cultivate and foster those relationships oftentimes the, the relationships closest to us we take for granted so what it, what is necessary for you to do to cultivate those most important relationships create awareness that they are important to you and how do you convey what you need from them in terms of support and again, rate yourself on this element on a scale of one to five, excuse me, one to 10. How is your current level of the, the team of support that you have that's going to help you in some way achieving your wellness vision and or achieving that 90 plus day goal? So what you have at this point are at least the starting point of your wellness vision and your ratings on these 90, excuse me, on each of these essential elements. As I was going through and presenting these principles, you likely noticed some things that are working well for you and some things that are getting in your way. So jot down for yourself what patterns that you want to keep and carry forward. What are going to what's going to help you the most in propelling that wellness vision, getting towards that. 90 plus day goal. And then what things are getting in your way? What, what energy drains might there be? Where are the times that you're not being compassionate to yourself? Where are the times that you're allowing your, yourself to get distracted instead of being present? And where are you trying to do it all on your own versus getting the help and support? Pick, pick one top pattern that you know you wanna carry and release forward and one top pattern that you know you want to release that you feel is going to help you the most in your wellness vision. And that might fold into one of these top one to three action steps that you will start to take to propel your performance and your resilience. So at this point, I'm going to open it up to questions and I'll pass it back to Mickey. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for a great presentation. Um, on really helping, I think, all of us get our minds across how do we balance our energy. And we, as we open it up for questions, I also want to invite everybody to join our Facebook group. If you haven't already, please join um, the I Am Back at Work. You can follow the page, but there's also the closed Facebook group, which is for women only. And we support each other on a regular basis um, through that group. And uh, Chris, we have some questions coming in. So Great. Sarah is asking if you could please repeat the name of the book about managing your energy versus time. 
Sure. It's called The Power of Full Engagement, and it's by Tony Schwartz and Jim Lohr. And Jim spells his last name L-O-E-H-R. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, another question by Eve. What do you see as the biggest obstacle that people you work with face regarding burnout? Oh, burnout's such a big umbrella. So I don't know that there's one obstacle. That being said, what happens in, a lot in common is the phrase, well, I should just be able to handle it all. I hear that a lot from women. I should just be able to do it all. And my challenge back to that is, well, who says? Who says that we, we need to do it all? Um, so it's okay to want it all, but maybe you don't maybe you don't try to do it all at once or at the same time. And again, as I talked about in the social slash support piece, um, there's some concern a lot in asking for help. I think a lot of women feel like that's a sign of weakness. And it's actually a sign of power. If you're going, if you're going to empower yourself, you're going to need a team to help you. It does take a village. So it's it's completely okay. If you need permission, I'm giving you permission uh, to go ahead and ask for help. No one's doing it on their own. People are definitely have some kind of tribe behind them that's helping them succeed. Right, and we, we all sort of make our priorities and decide what we are going to spend more or less energy on and what, you know, the house may not be perfect and the kids may not always eat a healthy meal, but we'll, we do it. Right, and I love yeah, that. And I'm glad you brought up the perfection piece too, because perf being trying to be perfectionist gets in our way. I advocate excellence over perfection and, and, and really asking yourself, are you truly giving your best? And your best is going to look different every day. We have different energy every day. So what's my best today? And, and, and what's the most important thing I need to focus on? And that would be another thing too. People are trying to give everything the same level of importance. And we shoot ourselves in the foot when we do that. But this pick a priority to focus on and, and do that one at a time. And forgive yourself. It's okay. It's okay yeah. if we don't do it all. And if it's not quite at the level that everything that we expected. Right. Okay, so I think this is it for today. So again, thank you, Chris, so much for joining us here today and for presenting and answering the questions. And I hope everybody else, thank you for joining us as well, that you join our live webinars and the recorded ones too. Great, and um, yeah, and if people want more info, they can, you see my uh, website there and on there, I also have a newsletter that I give out every month. Uh, so you'll see a way to access that as well. And with that uh, subscription, you get a free download of an energizing reset sheet that's available to you. And the newsletter and the subscription, it's free, right? It is free, yes. Okay. So thank you, Chris. And I hope everybody uh, joins um, Chris's uh, newsletter because um, Chris's advice is just so valuable. So thank, thank you, Chris. Thank you so much, Mickey. Thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.